Hello everyone and welcome to a new Blender tutorial video. And in this video we're going to be modeling X in Blender 2.82. So to start, Shift A, Mesh, Cube. Enable transparency in the top right hand corner of your screen. After you've enabled transparency, press G and Z to move down the cube and scale it in. Next, move it down until it matches this bottom of the space image. As always, the space image will be in the description down below. So after we've done this, I'm going to G, Shift Y, G, Shift Y, and just align this up. I'll have to be perfect, but I just don't like. That doesn't mean be careless though. S and Shift Y. Okay, I'm now going to grab uh, these versus here, or uh, I'm going to just move these out a little bit. This should be a nice quick tutorial. I'm going to say like 15, 20 minutes. Okay, E, B, G, and X. Drag it out to. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Sorry if you can hear my keyboard, hopefully it's not too loud. Oops. Uh, sorry, I was testing. Okay. R, E, G, and X. Y, drag it up to here. E, G. Hopefully my voice doesn't cut out too much. I will be honest, this is the second time I've done this tutorial. Yay. E, G, and X. G, and X. Like so. G, and X. G, and X. As you can see, this is a nice and easy one. I was going to put the timer on, but I have forgotten. I may as well get rid of that. Oh, so, okay. Um, <laughs> whoops. I'll just uh, edit in a timer, I guess. Okay, very easy. Problems at all. Okay, so as you can see, this is nice and easy. Okay. Taken really not very long to do this at all. Doesn't it? Oh, depending on the axe type, like it could be a fireman's axe, a, um, a tomahawk, a hatchet, anything really. Anyway, you see I'm already at the top of the axe. So I'm going to press number 3. Select these top vertices, do S, I do E, S, Y, and point and 1.2, and then go back to front view. Now press E and move it up. Do not worry about too much of the depth, we'll do that later. Grab this, press S and Z, drag it in like so, E, S, and Z. I'm then going to actually go and disable transparency and scale this in on the Y axis to a 0.8. Okay, next we grab these, press E, G, and Z. Don't worry about this bit down here. Uh, add a little bit here, G, and Z. Uh, e, G, and Z. But, okay, I will, however, get the outline bit right, like so. Go. E, G, and X. Uh, G and Z, shift Y like this, E, S and Z, actually on E again, and then I'm going to do G and Z, G and Z, grab this one, G, shift Y, here and a loop cut, G, shift Y, like this, G, shift Y, like so. And now you can see straight away that took 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Okay, you can see we have quite a nice looking axe. We do however probably need to scale it inwards ever so slightly. And there you go. Okay, so now I'm going to very quickly grab the back of it, I think. So, um, this and I'm going to very quickly 
drag this out a little bit like that okay add modifier subdivision surface okay run it for and now we tighten this up so to start i'm gonna make this bit here fully actually before we do this go to your materials tab press new call this x handle next press the plus key numpad one tab general transparency again and then select the axe head then assign it by pressing new and assign call this one axe head this will make it a lot easier later on okay so now we've done this we're going to go into the um, materials tab for the axe head like so and shader it so We'll be using an image texture for the X handle, but we will not for this. So to start with, sh Shift A, Shader, and Mix Shader, Shader, Add Shader, and then copy that with Shift and D. Plug the Mix Shader into there, yeah, Add Shader into here, and this Shader into there, like so. Okay. Next, do Shader Glossy and uh, change it to sharp, put the roughness on 0.6 and make it about this so put the V on 0 0.0642 and then plug it into your add shader next do shader diffuse and do the same again you can use the eyedrop tool this time and then make this a tiny bit darker okay shift a shader specular plug that into here Change the base color down a bit again, put the roughness on a 0.4 and then that should look nice, you can see that's a specular there. If we go into the rendered to view and add in a light, shift a light sun and go. Okay as you can see we have the nice shine. I feel like the, the metallic on the principal BDSF shader is a little bit weird sometimes. Which is why I'm using this. Another thing you can do is go input ambient occlusion and plug the, the AO into the AO value. And I don't know if this does a whole lot, but I, I honestly don't know. It doesn't seem to usually. Now you can plug this into the emissive, I guess, or into the like specular to make it really, really shiny. And control it with the roughness value if you really want to that but i'm not going to do that i kind of like this i'm going to increase the roughness to it by i think, think 0.3 so we have that nice shine on it and then after we've done this go ahead and add in a shader and uh sorry converter color ramp and a texture noise texture so the scale to four, uh, let's get the scale to six, the detail to three. Put the color into the FAC and the color of this into the shade, mix shader. It will look weird, I imagine. Yes, it does look weird, but the way we adjust the noise is like this. Tab, I'm going to wrap this quickly and then press Control T. I had the Node Wrangler add on enabled, so I'm going to actually set this to UV. Tab U Smart UV Project. There you go. Okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and. Okay, so I'm going to increase the scale until it looks how I want it to, which is about like this. And maybe make it a little bit less noticeable, something like this or to do. Maybe like that. That looks nice. Okay, now we have. A bit of noise to it. We can, however, adjust the location or rotation like so to change to how it looks. Okay, so now if you can see, we have this texture. So, what we can do is we can, I think I might um, decrease the brightness on this a little bit, maybe decrease the scale on this. Or um, tab. Actually, I'll leave it like this for time being. 
I'll go next, um, you can check your modifier to like 4 and you'll see it looks quite nice. I'm going to set it to 1 or 2 rather. And now let's um, tighten up the head, the axe head. So go back into solid view, enable transparency, make sure everything is deselected, and then um, don't enable to press you. And then control R and I'm just going to click so that the whole like mesh is selected. I'm then going to press right click. So it's just in the middle. Then I'm going to grab this and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to make it look how I want it to look. Like so. Uh, can I get that? Okay, there you go. Like this, nice and easy. There we go. Okay, now you can see it still looks a little bit weird. I didn't mess up the mesh. I think that it's because... Okay, what's going on down here? What does I do? So I'm a bit glitched or something. There you go. I'm using Shift E to uh, crease it. Far too much. I probably want like a point three. There you go. And then I'm gonna maybe move it up a bit, fade along the y-axis until it looks something like that. The noise is probably a lot too much, uh, quite a bit too much at current. Because what we need to, to do now, it's uh, now that I've tightened up the head. Don't tighten up the body yet. All right, shader to. Um, uh, when you're in the shader editor, uh, open up this window again, and I'm gonna very quickly decrease the FAC value on here so that it leans to about like a point two. This is full noise. This is a uh, full like metally specular thing. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is um one more add shader, and then do shader. Or well, shader principal BDSF, not volume. <laughs> shader principal BDSF. Plug that into. Uh, actually, sorry, mix shader, not add shader. My mistake. And plug this into here. Okay. Set the metallic to a point three. Set the specular to whatever you want. And the roughness to a 0.75. I'm gonna have it leaning sort of like that for a bit of noise. Yeah. Okay, and now I'm going to add one more thing in, and that is a one more add shader because I am going to use a Veroni. I hope I pronounced that right. A Veroni uh, texture. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, like this, so shader, a uh, texture, uh, this one here, Ver Veroni, and then set this to Manhattan and this to Smooth F1. After you've done that, go ahead and add in a converter color ramp, plug this into here and this into here. And once it is loaded, um, uh, and then once it is loaded, go ahead and um, what was it? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and change this accordingly. You can see the if I put the scale on this to like massive, you can see this doing stuff. So what I'm going to do is go into render tab and I'm going to set it like this. I'm going to actually inverse this by flipping the color ramp. Set it to more or less full dark. Don't know what's going on with this bit here. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be going on. I think it's the UV unwrap. Okay, so you can see this looks pretty good. Increase or decrease the smoothness, and you can increase or decrease this. So if you wanted to have this on like a, a billion, like so say 5,000, and put smooth the randomness on like zero, just set it to like full grey, you can have it like this. And if I was to want it to look like a wear, 
But the way you probably want to do this is probably like 2000. And then you can change the randomness or smoothness. But I want it to be sort of like that. But it looks like it has a bit of wear on it. Actually, I'm actually going to put this on 5000 so that it's very, very slight. And there you go. So I'm actually going to decrease the scale slightly so it's like that. Okay, there we go. Now we have our, our axe head. Looks pretty good. You can see we have noise. There's a slight bit of like uh, graying. Okay, next for the axe handle. I am going to be using an image shader for this. So I will be back in a moment. Okay, I've gotten all of the textures ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly go ahead and plug them all in. So the gloss, I'm going to add in a color invert. Plug this into here and this into the roughness. The invert shader gives me more control. Then do the same for the reflection. So. And then plug the reflection into specular. After you've done this, grab the normal map, set the color space to non color or non color data or data. It's just non color. And then do a, a vector normal map. That into here and that into here. What you can do then is if you see, we get that nice text. Next, with your color, simply plug it into the base color. And now you'll see we have this. What I am going to do is I'm going to increase the uh, decrease. This stuff has normally very, very slight gloss, so you'll probably want like a 0.2 and the reflection to be about 0.1. Next, I feel like this is probably a slightly too dark. Not by much, but a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go converter, math, color. Mix RGB. Set this to, uh, set this to mix. Put that into here. Uh, and then set this to multiply rather. And now you can see I can make this lighter or darker, like that. And now hopefully, there you go. That looks pretty good. I can even change the color if I really wanted to. Okay, next I'm gonna un UV unwrap this. So not UV project. I'm then gonna, um, I'm then gonna, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, uh, add in a normal map, a uh, control T, add in mapping, sorry, uh, the UV, so that it works, and then it will look a bit better. So I can just do this, collapse all of these, I think there's a quick way, like node, collapse, uh, okay, so once all of these nodes have been collapsed, we should now see we have a nice sort of wooden texture. Cool. And that also, another thing is, you can actually move this around if you wanted to. So you can increase or decrease the scale. Like that. I'm not gonna. Okay, another thing. Select, go to your axe head. Go back to side view. Select the front set of vertices, like this. Do it like that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll do. Um, I'm actually just going to select all of these bits here to make it easier. Then go to proportional editing and enable sphere. Press S and Y, and it will scale it in so that the axe head it goes thicker and then smaller again, as you can see. So I want it to be something like. That. There you go. There you go. Okay, now you can see we have a nice X head. So if we go into rendered view, you can see this looks pretty cool. Now we can add in adequate lighting and a floor. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, I'm going to delete the reference image, and I'm using the dynamic skies. Prefer a uh, plugin you can get that in the description. Uh, in the just by going into edit preferences and then searching up dynamic sky. Okay, I've now uh, enabled dynamic sky. 
It will put you in cycles automatically. I'm just going to set it back to Eevee because it still works. And you can see now we have a pretty nice looking X. So I'm going to go to the world origin. Mesh plane. With this plane, I'm going to give it a new material. Go to shader editor. Press N. Input ambient occlusion. Plug the color into there. And the AO into... Um, then a light path and do... A specular is camera ray. And uh, is glossy ray into roughness. And you can increase or decrease the distance of this. And what I'm going to do is you can see this is actually doing stuff. And if you can change the color on it and stuff. I want to make it slightly grey. And then slightly. You can uh, increase or decrease this. You can move this if you wanted to. But I'm not going to. Okay, next I'm going to scale this up. Tab, W, subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. U, unwrap. R and X, 90 degrees. G and Z, I'm going to move this up. I'm going to put zero to go into camera. Making sure it's on the floor. I'm going to make, give it like a slight um, look like this, which is R and Z. You can see we have a, a reflection, which you might not want. So to get rid of the reflection, uh, we can't actually see the sun if on here. If I hid this, or like the point of this, it's probably a bit too bright. So I'm going to decrease the strength to a like a point five. Now you can see we have this pretty nice looking axe head. If we I render this out, you can see it's a bit too bright and the camera is a little bit off. So I'm going to go ahead and go decrease the uh, gamma for the dynamic skies to about a point eight. You can see this will make it like more more uh, increase. Sorry, to like a. This should yeah. You can see this does actually change it. I'm going to put it like a five, and the second color to a nice look like that. Uh, what's this like? Okay, so this looks pretty good. This may be a bit too glossy, so I will fix that by going into Shader Editor, grabbing this, changing the um, roughness. If I, change, uh, if I change the specular roughness to like a 0.6, that will get rid of that. Or you can change this up as well. Okay, so now that that is done, if I render this out, you can see it's still a little bit off actually. Okay. Let's uh, increase the roughness of this to like 0.8. Oh no, wait, this is the wrong thing. Uh, increase the roughness of this to like a 0.9. And now when I render it out. Uh, okay, it's still slightly lossy, which is odd. Okay, let me put this on like a 0.8 and change the roughness on this up. I'll try it now. Still, okay. Try turning off the metallic. Oop, okay. Guess it is a specular. Let's put this on like an. Oh, let's put this full. What happens then? Still there? Is it a glitch or something? Or is it the specular? On the principal BDSF node? Huh. How odd. Let's try repositioning the camera a little bit. Or, um. Oh, I forgot to tighten up this, that might be why. Okay, let's try it now. Ah, there you go. Okay. So I am however, going to very quickly tighten up this, like so. And now I'm hoping. Yay! We have a nice looking axe. Okay, so now this is my method of doing it. The one thing I am going to change is I am going to go to Shader Editor. Oops. Uh, I may have frozen it. Okay, there you go. And I'm going to decrease the roughness of this to 0.3 and the roughness of this to 0.5. Okay, and now I'm hoping. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to add in a quick light and a um 
a spotlight. I'm going to point this like that and do render image. Okay, now you can see we have an, a, a shine that I want. So the, the thing that I am going to do, apparently I'm going to crash my blender. Wow, okay. I wasn't really expecting that. Um, okay, well, I look, my blender crashed, everyone, and I hadn't got a save, and the auto save broke. So what I was going to say is, um, I was just going to fix the lighting and add in-depth the field to the camera. But I do have having another one here. So, right, the, what I was going to say to do is after adding up the field, I was going to give you another option for textures, which is to go and get something called Material Library XV, and then go in the Edit Preferences and look it up, and then do and then go down to Brush Sampled Materials on here, and do Brush Metal and enable that, and that looks quite nice as well. As you can see, that looks pretty nice. So that's what I was actually going to say. Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please. <laughs> Bit of an abrupt ending, I know. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, sorry for the kind of abrupt ending. Um, yeah, it's kind of irritating. Oh well. Uh, please like and subscribe as it means a lot to me, and I'll see you in the next tour.